Welcome to the Mustang Sports Feed. Join us as we talk to athletes and coaches from the Masters University to get the inside scoop on the latest happenings in TMU athletics. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mustang Sports Feed, the official podcast of TMU Athletics. My name is Tim Hajduk, the Assistant Athletic Director, Events and Communications here at the Masters University. I'm honored to be joined by the man who does it all here at Masters, men's basketball head coach, athletic director Kelvin Starr, and his five years has made quite the imprint on the Mustang Athletic Program. Kelvin, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Well, in, in this past year, obviously a year like no other, um, in the five years that you've been here, Talk about the resilience of the coaches, the players, athletic trainers, athletic administrators. Fall sports were postponed of the spring. Every sport happening at the same time. What, what did you see out of the department as a whole? First off, Tim, I think people, yourself included, Steve Waldeck and Donna Henderson, who really were put in a position where they had to do double the load in the spring. I mean, everything was coming on us at once. So you and, and Steve and Donna all had just a huge impact and showed the true work ethic um, that you bring to the table and it really helped us get through. And there's a lot of extra people I know we hired part-time to help out, but you guys really led, led the charge there for us. Two of our coaches really, really worked hard at getting, actually getting a schedule. Even to have a schedule last year, last season was almost impossible. I think I scheduled maybe 60 games and ended up playing 26 in the end because we pivoted so many times. Ended up playing some similar teams multiple times, which wasn't the most fun, but we got a schedule in. And really that was the most important thing is getting to play because these kids just want to play. So overall, it was a very challenging year, but I think our staff did a really good job of getting through it. Yeah, no, it was definitely a team effort from from all sides of the department, everyone coming together and and trying to give the best experience for the student athletes because that's ultimately what we're all here to do is to give them the the best experience and to serve them. And definitely something else that obviously sustained us was God's faithfulness through it all. I think back to a meeting we had with campus pastor Harry Walls. He talked about the importance of meditating on God's word. What do you remember from that meeting that that really just kept the department as a whole grounded and centered on Christ? Yeah, it went blessed him to have uh, Harry Walls, our director of student life, really have an impact in our athletic department. He's kind of taken it upon himself to pastor our staff. And we've been able to, with those that don't know, obviously listen to this, we've been able to week, meet even, almost weekly with Harry and uh, go through the word and, and just learn and grow as a team, as leaders. And I think, yeah, just, just relying on Christ and our relationship with him, and I think our focus on that really has helped us get through this year. Um, when, when you put it all in perspective and you really realize why you do what you do, that's what really matters, not whether you're actually playing games or whether you're dealing with COVID or whatever else we had to deal with last year. It really, What really matters is the ministry to the kids. And for us as leaders, it, it's us checking ourselves and making ourselves equipped and ready to serve these kids and lead these kids. And, and something else I've seen firsthand, your assistant coach, Evan Jenkins, he's really served your players. I'm up in cubicle land with him. I'm across the way. And I, I've seen numerous times where players are going there, seeking his counsel, his advice, and he's really just pouring into their lives. How important you know, are the meetings like that for your program? How else do you pour into the spiritual lives of your players? Yeah, and that's everything for us. That's what gives us joy. I had the privilege uh, two Sundays ago of attending Crossroads Church and seeing Johnny McWilliams get baptized. And Johnny came here young. I don't even know if he was saved and he might even tell you he wasn't. You know, we have stories like that all the time where guys realize and gals realize, hey, I don't really know the Lord. I, don't, I haven't really surrendered my life to Christ. And that's so much jo joy. It brings so much joy to us as coaches when we get to witness that and see a life transformation. And Evan does an amazing job as our assistant coach in basketball. I know all our coaches do a good job, but I get to see him firsthand. He starts out in the recruiting process. When we recruit, that's where we start. You know, we talk about testimony and where you're at because really that's important, the most important thing at our university. And he does, he follows through with that. He doesn't just talk it, he, he walks it and he's a testimony himself. He's an example of someone who came to the university, his life has transformed, he has embraced the word of God as part of his life. He's now married to a beautiful Christian gal who also attended Masters University. And it's just a really cool story. And I think he his goal is to give that same experience and that same influence to the young men that come through our program. So 
Well, you talk about that transformation. I mean, that's ultimately the goal, right, of the department of, of pouring into these students' lives. I wanted to give you an opportunity for some of our listeners who may not know what the master's way is. I've seen that document. Yep. Wanted to give you a chance to really just explain what, what that means. Yeah, so Tim, about, I think, two and a half, almost two and a half, three years ago, we went on a staff retreat, and this master's way thing kind of started there. We, we got together as coaches, and it was written, really, and put together by the coaches. Harry Walls had influence on it, too, and myself, and we kind of put it together. But really, the coaches are what were the, the beginning of it. The, the authors of it. And what it was, was a, it was a way to articulate why we do what we do and why we want to do what we do. Um, and ultimately it's to serve Christ as we do. We're here to, here to serve Christ and to honor him and to give glory to him. And everything we do is an act of worship. And so we use that acronym, the worship. W is work. Work is under the Lord. O is overcoming, overcoming obstacles. Uh, R is responsibility, taking a self-responsibility for your actions. S is selfless. And that's really the, the centerpiece of it, like being selfless. And that's kind of culture these days with athletics. Everything is promoted the opposite individualism. So that's a big one we have to overcome. H is humility, which at the core of Philippians 2, it's like us being humble like Christ was humble to the cross. I is integrity, which is obviously very, very important to us. And P is the passion, the over-encompassing over passion of why we do what we do and doing is unto the Lord. So that's the, the act we use, the worship, and, and everything we do is an act of worship. And so our coaches, they put their own touch on that and do it their own way. But what we've done in our Bible studies as a staff is we've tried to teach uh, ways to, to preach that message to our kids and how to articulate that using the scripture. And then each coach puts his own fingerprint on it or she puts her own fingerprint on it. And we impart that on the kids continually trying to drip on them with the word of God and how to live and how to act, live an act of worship and do sports that way. And so that's really the master's way. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, I mean, that, that's something that when, when I came here end of January, I mean, that just immediately struck me was how each team really uses the sport as an act of worship unto the Lord. Obviously, each team's trying to win, but they're able to keep it all in perspective and and do it for a greater purpose than, than themselves and just trying to win. You know, speaking of winning games, looking ahead to the fall, you know, it seems like fall sports are going to be back to normal. seems like it's going to be a normal schedule. Uh, the GSAC will be back into a single pod. How excited are you for that? Well, very excited. And I think the athletes are very excited. And I think the administrators are very excited <laughs> because it's just going to be taking that challenge off the table. It could be normal. It might almost be easy for us to go through the year. So we're all very excited. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we still want to win. Obviously, we're here to compete. That's why you keep a score. So winning is important too. Now, you know, you don't, let's not hyper-spiritualize it and say we're not, we don't want to win. We want to win. And we're going to compete. We're going to do things with excellence. But that's, again, the master's way. Doing it with excellence is unto the Lord and work hard. And we believe that if you execute the master's way, then the winning will come as a result. You know, And it doesn't have to come. But obviously, we like, we like winning too. So it's just how you use that and how you do it. And again, you do it and you give honor to him. You do it with humility. And so that's, that's what it's all about for us. But yeah, we're excited about the GSAC being back to normal next year. I was part of the AD meeting a few, about a, three weeks ago. And it was unanimous that, hey, we're going to move forward and try and get this thing normal, as normal as we can for the athletes, student athletes. So very excited. Well, and something else that was probably very exciting for you personally, the opportunity to coach both your oldest sons last year. What was that experience like? Overall, yeah, it's a, it's a great joy <laughs> and it's a privilege to be able to do it. I think any... Any dad would love that opportunity. Uh, it can be challenging at times too. I'm blessed because my boys love basketball. I didn't, you know, they grew up around it, but they did love it. And so it's intrinsic for them. They, they love doing it. So I, I just try and treat them as best I can like any other athlete on the team. I'm still a dad, so it's hard at times. Um, I expect a lot from them, um, but I'm blessed. I'm blessed to do it. Our family's blessed to be a part of the Masters University for this time in our lives. So last season, you had a 21-5 and five overall record. There's a lot of growth. From your team had a pretty young squad last year sometimes started three freshmen at a time how encouraged were you by the growth that you saw from start to finish last season yeah i was encouraged tim i mean like you said it's a very young group i don't want to, that's not to make excuses we never want to do that they're, they're good freshmen so it's not they're that young and they're a little older two of them are older they're actually 19 as freshmen so and they're very talented but lucky to have them i mean we're blessed to have a guy like caleb lowry and Caden also, those guys had multiple Division One offers. And so for us to get those guys uh, at, at our institution is a blessing. 
And then Davian surprised us. We thought he was going to be good, but he was a really, really good freshman out of Pasadena, Davian Brown. And so we, you know, our freshman class was really, really influential in this in this last year. I like the fact that we had a little bit of an easier schedule, so it allowed these guys to kind of get their feet wet. And then, you know, we dealt with a lot of injuries last year. So we had three seniors that were really would have been really good leaders for us. So it was kind of a, a year that that kind of was a good year for that to happen. Um, this coming year, well, we'll see what happens. So, Last year in, in post-game interviews, I mean, you talked so much about the process and establishing the culture. Basically, you returned the full roster from last season. Everyone's a year older now. How confident are you going the next season with the group that you have? Well, you're right. It's always about process, right? If you focus on the process, the results take care of themselves. That's always been the key. And then we have a culture we're trying to establish on the court. Like we talked earlier about the master's way, we also have a culture on the court and how we articulate basketball and how we play basketball. And we always talk about, I talk to the players about if someone walked in the gym, watched our practice, they would know what we're all about by just watching a practice, any given practice. And if you have that culture and you, you're always showing it on how you play, how hard you play, how physical you play, the style you play, then you're gonna have success. And so it's getting kids to buy into that culture uh, on the court. Along with that, it's a lot about being the selfless, right? So it's a team sport. And again, we're counterculture there because everybody's coming in thinking they're the man, I've got to get mine. And individual goals are great, right? No one's going to belittle that. Everyone should want to be all conference and be a great player, the best player they can be. But the team stuff trumps that. And teaching kids that and having them buy into roles is a process. That's a process. It's teaching kids, hey, here's what you need to do better. And sometimes less is better. A kid can come into the program and think he's going to do A, B, and C, but if he just does A, he's going to play more. And so teaching him that. So that's that's important to us. Um, that takes time. That is a process. Um, but it's we we just constantly dripping on him with the culture and holding that expectation, and that's our goal. That's how we've had success here in the last five years. Well, you, you mentioned Caleb Lowry early. Wanted, wanted to give you a chance to to give him praise. I mean, he really his freshman year just took the GSEC by storm. Double double machine. What did you see out of him last year? Yeah, Caleb's a special player, and he's not even touching the surface. Like he's so laid back and so just talented, and he goes out there and just does it. And even even in the summertime, watching him work out a little bit the last couple of weeks, he he's put on about fifteen pounds. He's now about two fifteen, which is going to change his game completely. He, I mean, he's every bit of six eight now. He's just an incredible athletic frame. And now he's starting to get serious about it, which is scary for the opponent because before it was just like, hey, I do basketball because I play. That's what I do. Now he's like, I really want to be good. I think I can be really good. Uh, he, he has a big future. You had a tremendously talented freshman class last year. You had a couple very talented freshmen coming in this year, Anthony Peoples Jr., Tiago Suarez. How excited are you about them and what will they bring to the table? Yeah, well, let's start with Tiago. Tiago, younger brother of the Suarez legacy here at Master University. Uh, blessed to have him, another great character, Suarez family member. Uh, Tiago's a little different from Tim, not as tall. He's about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, but he's very physical, plays harder than most players I've watched the last year and a half in high school games. Like he really plays hard, which is a credit to him. It's a natural instinct he has. He can really shoot the ball, uh, really at a high clip from the three. So he's going to be a good player. He's definitely going to have to figure out his role and how to figure out how to play in the system um, and identify where his, str his strengths are. And Anthony Peoples is a is a interesting story because he probably should have been recruited higher. He's a 6'9", 17-year-old who really was young for his grade. No one really knows about him. He's talented. He can shoot it. He's long. He's like every bit of 6'9", maybe even pushing 6'10". And a great kid. And so we're blessed to have him too. And we're looking forward to him. He'll probably redshirt next year because our roster's so deep. And that'll give him a chance to put some weight on and get mature and a little bit. Like I said, he's not even 18 yet. So again, I think I'm really excited about both those guys. Um, and I think they'll fit seamlessly into our culture. Well, and Anthony Peoples is just coming off a CIF Open Division Championship over that famed Sierra Canyon team. So so quite, quite the pickup for you guys. Yeah, he's coming from a really good program, right? So... Coach Coach Giles over there actually I actually played against Coach Giles in college when he was at Concordia and I was at San Diego Christian, way way back yeah. years and years ago when yeah it was almost like the game was a different game. I don't think either of us could play these days, but I'll let Josh <laughs> speak for himself. 
But uh, Coach Giles, an amazing coach, does an amazing job, very disciplined high school program. And so, yeah, we're getting a good one and from a good program. Well, we go from from one Suarez to another. You mentioned Tim. He's he's one of a handful of recent alum that have been playing professionally overseas. So Tim Suarez, Hans Latencia, Brock Gardner, Daryl McDowell White. What it is about your program that prepares players for that next step in their career? Well, let's first off just say what it is. They're four awesome players, right? Very good basketball players, and we won a lot of games mainly because we had really good players. That's what part of coaching is, find the good players. And so we were blessed to have those four guys in our program. Really, now I'm dealing with a whole new group of good players, another talented group and as talented, but just different. And so it's a transition from those guys. And they're all doing so well, like overseas. I mean, I hope that what we taught them character-wise and culture-wise has a big part in their success moving forward and keeps them grounded, especially in the Word of God. Um, but they, they both, all four of them, I mean, Tim had an amazing year and is the sky's the limit for Tim in the professional ranks. Hansel obviously has the Colombian connection and, and plays for the national team has started for them. For those who don't know, he started as a point guard for the national team and has basically played two pro seasons. He plays back in Colombia, then he goes to Iceland and then he's so, and Hansel's, he's going to have a long career overseas too. Brock uh, had another good first year in Portugal. And, and is looking to go back and married in about a month to Tristan uh, from the women's basketball team, another cool story. And then he'll probably go back overseas with her and, and get a second second year over there. And then Daryl, Daryl's doing really well back home, playing in the NBL one, which is the second the level right below the top level there. And he's trying to break into the NBL, the top level, and I wouldn't be surprised if he does it one day. Yeah, well, yeah, you, you had quite the success with that group of guys, won a few GSEC. Tournament titles, a couple GSEC regular season titles, and we look forward to seeing your team back on the court to try to get back in, in the win column there. But, Kelvin, we really appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks. Glad to be here. Thanks for listening to the Mustang Sports Feed. For more information on TMU Athletics, visit GoMustangs.com. To learn more about the Masters University, visit Masters.edu. We'll see you next time. We'll see you next time.